Community of Christ, gather together. God calls us together as one body. We are invited into this space. We are invited to this table. We are invited to open our hearts to our creator, our community, and our broken world. Community of Christ, come. Let's worship God together. Good morning, Good morning. And welcome home. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning and every morning, we invite all on a journey of acceptance, connection, meaning, and purpose. Welcome to everyone joining us in the sanctuary and to those watching online. Know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are physically, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's join our voices together now in song. Actually, let me give you some um, announcements first. <laughs> first, um, thank you to everybody who came yesterday and helped out uh, at our uh, Properties Ministry Workday. We got some wonderful uh, projects done, spruced up the place a little bit for the fair next week and preparing for the winter to come. Speaking of the fair, next, next Sunday, um, right after service, we will begin transforming the church and moving all of the, all of the moving pieces that have to be moved. Uh, so we hope that you can join us next week and, and hang out a bit after, uh, after the service so that we can continue to transform the church. Before that, next Saturday, uh, Hal Cutler will be leading um, uh, a session for pie baking, putting together, uh, assembling um, apple pies up in Ames Hall. Um, it's always a, a fun time and with lots of people peeling and chopping and um, rolling out dough and all of that kind of stuff. So if you are available for that, uh, send an email to Hal to let him know. And out in the um, parlor after the service today, you'll find some sign-up sheets for all of the many ways that you can participate in the fair on the 17th and 18th. Um, there are so many things for everyone to do. It's a great time to come together as community. It's a great time to, to serve the people outside of the church and to get to, to, get to know them and, importantly, to, um, to help the town get to know what a great community MCC is. So if you can spare an hour, if you can spare most of the day, um, go check out the sign-up sheets and sign up for whatever you are available for. And we are um, grateful for all of the ways that people commu um, contribute to the ministries here at MCC with your time and your talent and your treasure. If you have a financial offering um, this morning in the sanctuary, there are offering plates on as you exit the sanctuary, or at any time you can go to our website, mccsudbury.org, and find a variety of ways to donate there. So now, let's join our voices together in song. 
um, singing from the insert that you'll find in your bulletin, All My Hope on God is Founded. And I invite you to rise as you are comfortable doing so. I'm Beth Whitlock. Can you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Dear God, we could use your help. We humans are on unsure footing. Everything seems to have been cut in half right down the middle, and we fear we're going to fall into the crevasse that separates the two sides. Division seems to be all we know, and we participate in the complaining, and the believing that we are right and the other side is wrong. We feel helpless to stop the suffering of people in war zones and here in the U.S. where no place seems safe from gun violence or racism. We are inundated by doomsday articles about, how, about what can or will go wrong in the world, our communities, in nature. Exactly one year from today, we will have our country's presidential election. Few of us feel confident in what those results will be and or whether they will change anything. And yet, we have you, God, to confide in, to trust in. We know that you will forgive us our divisive talk and that you will help us stop doing it. Through prayer, you offer us hope that we can help mend instead of tear apart. Thank you for allowing us to believe in you and in ourselves and in each other. There has always been war, there has always been hate and prejudice, and there has always been love. Please help us sow love and forgiveness. Let us follow in the path of all those souls who have passed before us, who chose to mend and heal. Amen. Um, each Sunday, we renew our promises to one another and to God. If these words are unfamiliar to you, please feel free to listen. Please join me now as we recite together the covenant of a moral congregational church found in your bulletin. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, 
we agree to walk together in all God's ways, made known or to be made known to us. The timer is going to go off in like 30 seconds, so I'm just. There we go. There you go. That was a quick 30 seconds. God's way is the way of peace. It's a peace that we are meant to bring into our hearts. It's a peace that's meant to surround us and emanate from us. It's a peace that we are called to send throughout the world. And it seems like it's too much. It seems like it's overwhelming, but it begins simply enough by sharing love with those around us. Here at MCC, we have a special way to share a sign of peace. We call it the Holy Spirit handshake. Hold your hand up to your neighbor as they hold theirs up to yours. Leave space for the Spirit. Bring that energy and that love into your heart. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Please be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Micah. We're using the inclusive translation of the Bible. It's written in your bulletin if you'd like to follow along. Listen now for these words from God. Thus says the Lord, You prophets who lead my people astray, who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who have nothing to put in their mouths. You will have nightmares, not visions. You'll have darkness, not prophetic light. The sun will set for the prophets. Your day is no more. Seers and diviners will be humiliated and overcome with shame. They'll put out their hands, they'll put their hands over their mouths because God no longer speaks through them. But I am full of strength by the Lord's spirit, full of justice and courage to declare the crimes of Jacob and Israel to their faces. Listen, you leaders of the house of Jacob, rulers of the house of Israel, you who loathe justice and pervert all that is right, You who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with violent injustice. Her leaders sell their verdicts for bribes. Her priests accept fees for their rulings. Her prophets practice divinations for money. Yet they rely on God, saying, Isn't the Lord in our midst? No disaster will overtake us. Because of you, Zion will become a plowed field, Jerusalem a heap of rubble and the Temple Mount overgrown with brush. And our gospel reading comes from Matthew's gospel, chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Jesus told the crowds and the disciples, the religious scholars and the Pharisees have succeeded Moses as teachers. Therefore, perform every observance they tell you to. But don't follow their example. Even they don't do as they say. They tie up heavy loads and lay them on others' shoulders, while they themselves will not lift a finger to help alleviate the burden. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and wear huge tassels. They are fond of places of honor at banquets and the front seats in synagogues. They love respectful greetings in public and being called rabbi. But as for you, avoid the title rabbi, for you have only one teacher, 
and you are all sisters and brothers. And don't call anyone on earth your mother or father. You have only one parent, our loving God in heaven. Avoid being called leaders. You have only one leader, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be the one who serves the rest. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends our reading. Would you please pray with me? Oh God, as I dare to try and speak in your name, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the prophet Micah has one of my favorite lines. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God? It's a line I liked so much, I named my youngest child after the prophet. And it feels good. It's one of those lines that just seems right. It's quick and easy. It's kind of a bumper sticker prayer in some ways. Um, But it feels good. This is what the rest of the book of Micah is like. <laughs> it's a little bit more gloom and doom. And in some ways, that, the tone, that's the tone for which Micah was most famous. Jeremiah, one of, one of Micah's contemporaries who comes a little bit later, um, writes in his book, Micah of Moresheth, who prophesied during the days of King Hezekiah of Judah and said to all the people of Judah, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Zion's, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. There are basically two kinds of prophets in the Bible. When things are going well, the prophets cry out, you better watch out, it's not going to last. When things are going bad, They say, don't worry about it. Things are going to get better. Micah prophesied during a pretty tumultuous time. He lived in a small town southwest of Jerusalem in the southern kingdom of Judah. The northern kingdom of Israel had already fallen to the Assyrians, but things seemed to be going well for Judah, at least on the outside. Those in power seem to be working to make Jerusalem a big, beautiful city. But Micah called out the powers that be and accused them of dishonest business practices, which impoverished the city's citizens. He also called to account the prophets of his day, whom he accused of accepting money for their oracles. And he condemned religious practices that were unconnected to ethical performance. These corrupt and dishonest practices would be the downfall of Judah, he prophesied. In our gospel reading, Jesus calls out the religious leaders of his day for some of the same sins. The practices and the rituals are there, but they're done for the wrong reasons. All their works are performed to be seen, he says. They're done for man's glory, not for God's. Now, unfortunately, scripture like these two have often been used to fuel anti-Semitism. On the surface, we can read or hear these words and maybe convince ourselves that Jesus is only condemning Jewish, Jewish religious leaders like the Pharisees. Avoid the title rabbi, he says. And Micah's words are directed at Jerusalem and at rulers of the house of Israel. So it may be easy for us to say that these words are about them. We may find ourselves tempted to say that the words of Micah and other Hebrew prophets or other books of the Hebrew Bible are obsolete or don't really matter for Christians because Jesus came and changed everything. But of course, to do so would be wrong. Too often we're tempted to look back at Hebrew scripture through Jesus 
But really, what we should be doing is looking at Jesus through the lens of Hebrew scriptures. Those words are the words that Jesus studied. Those prophets are the prophets that Jesus followed. Jesus' words and actions are meant to lift up those of the prophets and the law, not to supersede them or invalidate them. So once we can get past that temptation, we can begin to recognize the universality of these words. Both Jesus and Micah talk about humility. Both bring up the truth that lack of humility can bring anyone down. Politicians and religious leaders, no matter how powerful or famous or rich, must root their vocation in humility. Now, sometimes I think this is a bit of a catch-22. Leaders, government leaders, business leaders, religious leaders should lead from a place of humility, but often we find ourselves called to these professions because at least on some level, we're the ones looking for power and fame. The irony isn't lost on me that I stand up here and tell you all to listen to me about being humble. <laughs> and it's easy to see politicians clamoring for glory. Even and especially those who shout out, hey everyone, I'm a Christian, look at me praying. All their works are performed to be seen, I seem to remember hearing someone say recently. Mm. We are called to be, we are all called to be prophets. We are all called to stand up for justice. Justice especially for the oppressed and the outsiders. Micah denounces prophets who cry peace when they have something to eat, but declare war against those who have nothing to put in their mouths. Jesus condemns leaders who tie up heavy loads and lay them on others' shoulders. We are called to hold our leaders accountable when they, when they don't take care of people who are marginalized or hunger, hungry or who don't have access to the basic necessities of, lives, of life. We are called to hold our leaders responsible for using our money to destroy rather than build up. We are all called to humility, to walk humbly with our God, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, the one who on the night of his arrest as he headed for certain death, got down on his knees and washed the feet of his disciples and then shared a meal with them. Around this table, we are all equal. This meal, this blessed memorial of our dying Lord is a reminder of what it means to be humble. We come to the table looking for nourishment and refreshment for our bodies and souls. In a world that seems to be filled with despair, we choose to share this meal together, allowing the spirit to increase our faith and love and helping us to find peace and to find hope. Micah is, of course, not all gloom and doom. Like most of the prophets, he spends some time telling everyone how terrible things will get, but then he reassures them that things will get better again someday. We can't give up on hope. We have to believe that it will get better. And that, that will happen when we can find our own humility and when we can hold our leaders accountable for the actions that they undertake in our name. I still like that other part of Micah, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly. Those words are a summary of these other more difficult verses. And they remind us that justice and mercy and humility exist beyond time and space. It doesn't matter if we're talking about Judah in the shadow of the Assyrian Empire 700 years before Christ, or if we're talking about the American Empire, spending hundreds of thousands of times the amount of money on death instead of life. Or whether we're talking about Ancient prophets selling oracles or modern-day judges, congressmen and senators selling favors. 
Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. We are invited to this table of humility and grace, where we will receive living bread. As we share this meal as the community of Christ, we thirst to recognize God in our midst and to know God's vision of glory and grace. May we thirst for, soon, for what soon our portion will be. May we heed the words of the prophets upon whom Christ's ministry is based. May we all find justice, mercy, and humility in our walk together with each other and with our God. Amen. Pastor Marcus and the kids are coming up in a second. 
talk amongst yourselves. I'll give you a topic. The Holy Roman Empire was neither neither Holy Roman nor an empire. Will the children come up and join me for children's moment as I fix my mic? Please have some sit down. Pastor Tom, would you hand me that mic? So we are running a little late because we were, we created a labyrinth and we, well, I'll tell you, they can tell you what we did. All right, let's see, make sure this is on. So, what did we do today, Ben? Oh, um, we made labyrinths, and then... Is that what you have folded up right there? Uh, yeah. For safekeeping, of course. For storage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we prayed while we put our finger around the labyrinth. Can you show them? I can hold up mine. All right, did you go uh, slow or fast? I went slow. You went slow. And what were some of the colors that people chose? Uh, anything. We did blue, we did red, green, and yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then let's give the mic to Harlan. And then after we traced it with our finger, then what did we do? Um, we went in a room and then we... We went into the, to Ames Hall, into that big yeah. giant room. Walked around in a circle and traced it slow and prayed when we were thinking. We say that last part really loud in the mic, what we did. We, what did you say? We prayed? We prayed um, while we were going in a circle. We prayed while we were going in a circle. Good job. Um, Harrison, do you want to say who you prayed for in your labyrinth? No. Okay. <laughs> Can't say the darkest things. Micah, you do not have the option of saying no. You want to say who you pray for when you're laughing? I personally forget. You forgot who you pray for. Ben, you want to say who you pray for? I prayed for Israel and the people in there in Palestine. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things we did, do you remember what I asked you to do before we said what we're going to pray for? Well, what did we do? We quiet our what? We, yeah. Our minds. We quiet our minds. And lastly, what is a labyrinth? If you were to explain, well, actually two questions. One, what is prayer? And the simplest term, what is prayer? That's a calling out to God. Calling out to God, talking to God. And then what is a labyrinth? Without looking at the instructions of it. <laughs> 
Is it a maze? It's a maze where you find your center. Yes, as opposed to finding the center of a maze, we find our center. And Harley, you had something. You said kind of. Kind of like a maze, but you like color it. You color it. And then the path is in what kind of shape? It's in a circle. Yeah, and then why is it in a circle? Because we're on a, a path. Harrison, you had something? Nothing. You had nothing. Because we're on a path with who? God, good job. There was only one answer that would work there, God or Jesus. All right, perfect. Can we, can we do a quick prayer before you go back to your seat and show your parents your, your labyrinth? Okay. Can you say, dear God, thanks for being on my path, and thanks for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Feel free to make air, paper airplanes out of your um, papers like Harrison did. All right, you may go back to your seats and be with your parents. We approach this table in a sense, with a sense of humility. We do so seeking to have a clean heart. Would you please join me in our responsive prayer of confession found in your bulletin? Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. When no answer was coming out of the void, you spoke, God of our hearts, calling forth creation in all its beauty. Chipmunks dashing across lawns, eagles soaring over valleys, comets streaking across night skies. This was brought forth for us, those created in your image, but we long to live in sin's shadows, and so we wander down death's paths. You repeatedly sent past prophets to us, People who called us to return, but we would not practice what they preached, but continued to play in temptation's yard. So you gave us the answer of your heart, becoming one of us in Jesus, so we could be filled with your hope. Here in these moments of silence and word, here as we gather at your feast of grace, we join in offering praise to you. We come to this table not only with those who are sitting near us, but with those who have occupied this space before, and with those that we bring in our hearts and in our thoughts. I invite you now, as the Spirit calls to you, to speak out loud the name of those saints and souls that you carry with you. with these names that we've spoken out loud, with those that we hold in our hearts, with the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God, singing together, holy, holy, holy.
You alone are holy. God who speaks to us and Jesus is blessed by your love and goodness. Like a father teaching his kids to drive, he is your patience with us. Like a brother who shares baking secrets, he is your compassion to us. Like a sister who shows us how to bend the, ba the ball, he is your wisdom towards us. Like a mother who confronts our deepest fears, he is your life and hope, which comes out of the tomb, having defeated the power of death. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples. He took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the chalice, he took the wine, which is the new covenant of my blood. And he said, do this as often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. As we recall his life and ministry among people, as we remember his death and resurrection for all, we speak of that faith, which is often a mystery to us. Your witness to weakness over power, Jesus died on the cross. Your witness to love overcoming hate, Jesus was raised from death. Your witness to promises yet to be fulfilled, Jesus will come again. As we gather around this table, pour out your spirit upon us, the gifts of the bread and the cup. As we eat of your brokenness, may we live humbly with others. May we speak with humility to power. As we drink from your grace, May we act humbly in seeking justice. May we serve others with humility and love. And when your light has overcome all shadows, when we are brought to your table in glory, we will join our siblings every time and every place in praising you forever. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. In a moment, uh, Deacon Sally Harvell and our confirmation candidate, Anna Morrissey, will uh, take plates with our bread on it. We invite you to take a piece, rip off a piece of bread, and pass the plate to your neighbor. Hold on to the bread until all have received and we'll share it together. In the same way, they'll come by with cups of grape juice. Again, take a cup of juice and... Um, pass the tray to your neighbor, hold on to it until we all share together. If there is anybody who needs to have gluten-free, um, we have some gluten-free wafers up here. You can either let them know or uh, come up here and let me know, and we will serve that to you as well. This is a table who is open to everyone. Regardless of baptismal status or denominational tradition, whether this is a meal that you have come to time and time again, or if this is your first time at this table. On that night when Jesus shared this meal with his disciples, there was sitting at that table with him one who would betray him, one who would doubt him, many who would desert him. He knew this, and still he welcomed them. Surely we are welcome to this table. The table of bread and cup is now ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who, live, who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Jesus became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here for as long time. You who have tired to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is here we are invited to meet Christ. These are the gift of God for the people of God. Come, for all things have made, been ready for you.
the bread of life broken for you. The bread of life broken for you. This is the bread of life. Eat and be nourished. Savior. <clears throat> the blood of our Lord Savior poured out for you. Cup of blessing, drink and be refreshed. Giving thanks for God, for the gifts of community, and for all the meals together. Let us pray the words that Jesus taught us as we say together the Lord's Prayer, as it is written in your bulletin or using whatever words that bring you comfort. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have gathered at God's table, we have heard God's word, and we head back out into God's world. We do so with a song on our hearts. I invite you to uh, turn to hymn number 453 in the Blue Chalice hymnal. 
as we sing together called as partners in Christ's service. And I invite you to rise if you're comfortable doing so. Go now in peace. Remember the Lord's presence often and take strength from the knowledge that the one who calls and sends also sustains. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours now and always. Amen. We have received God's blessing. I invite you now to look across the center aisle with those partners with whom you have shared this time of worship as we offer a blessing to each other, singing together, God be with you, till we meet again.